So we're here with Microchip and there's a couple new chips here, the Microchips. So there is. You? I'm Jacob Lassen. I'm working with Microchip, part of our product marketing team. So we have two new products coming out uh, this week. So the first one is the PIC uh, 16F 18446. And uh, this new device is having a very nice ADC. This is the first small pick with the 12-bit ADC with computation as well. 12-bit ADC, what does that mean? 12-bit ADC. What does it do? So the, the resolution here means that you can actually uh, do more accurate measurements. So the intention here is that we want to be uh, giving customers a better solution for censoring applications and measuring analog stuff. So in addition to the 12-bit we have, we also have uh, oversampling in hardware. And that means that you can either suppress noise better, or you can actually gain better resolution by signal processing, digital signal processing. So you have 12-bit analog performance, plus additional three bits of digital performance. So you're actually up to, to 14, 15 bits in real-world applications. So the demo we have here, that is with the new device that we have, the 18446. Here we have set up the board. We have um, a small standard development board that we have soldered onto the baseboard. And we're then showing different types of sensors, sensor applications where we're using these new analog capabilities. So the demo that is running right now is doing proximity sensing. So here you see the circle. As it goes larger, it means that I'm closer. It has a capacitive touch sensor along the edge here. So that is used to actually detect whenever I'm approaching the board. We then also have other stuff here, other cool demos. We have a pressure sensor. So the small sensor here is detecting pressure. So if I'm just tapping it, you can see that it starts to produce a little bit of ripple here. We have one more. We have the temperature sensor. Let's see if I have warm fingers today. So if I hold this one, it should go up. Well, I have cold fingers today. <laughs> It's cold. It's my fingers are colder than it's the crazy driving. cold in yeah. Hamburg right now. Right. So the other thing there we have battery that's not too easy to demonstrate. Um, so the last thing here is the metal detector. So here you have a coil which is capable of actually detecting if I'm approaching. So I'm using my watch here, and you can see first the gold is starting to react, and then the beeping frequency is increasing. So here we're doing the metal detection. So all of these things are things you can do with this new analog capability. One chip. One chip. So this is the one running it. So what is it going to be used for? Uh, the, the, here it says something about the washing machines or what is it yeah. going to be used for? I mean anything where you need sensors. So if you have a, a washing application like this one, you can use it for many of the things where you need to detect water temperature, you need to detect maybe some of the particles in the water if the, if the washing cycle is automated and so on. So a lot of the things you need quite good ADCs. So is this a very important new chip? I mean, it's, it's nothing like that before? No, because here we have the 12-bit ADC and a very small package. So that is a new part that, that uh, before, we think are relevant like for our customers. Is this microcontroller with nothing else or something like that? Oh, no, no, no. There's a lot of peripherals to it. So you have all the standard communication peripherals. You have a lot of very cool timers that you can use either for detecting like I showed you with the fidget spinner where we have a rotational detection that? timer. Yeah, I can do that. So here we so have This is cool the microchip demo. fidget spinner. So this is the coolest fidget spinner in the world? That's the coolest fidget spinner in the world. So what it does is it's actually using one of our special timers to do a rotational speed detection and it's synchronizing with a small sensor we have uh, on the board here. So if I turn it on, what I can do is that I can spin it and it would show the microchip text here. Nice. So do that. And, uh, by, with eyes, I can definitely see microchip right here. My, my camera has not the right, uh, right so uh, shutter speed, but it's okay. Yeah. But uh, it says microchip, like super cool there. Yeah. And can it be programmed to say something else? Yes, it can. Because here we have added our Bluetooth module as well. So it means that you can actually put it into programming mode by holding these two buttons here. And you can then load something cool for your wife, for your girlfriend, yeah. or something you can that you want to show. App. You can load it with an app. You have some communication uh, there. Uh, so basically it has a... It senses the speed. It senses the speed. So I can just, you can barely see it here, but you have a small magnet here on the back side. And you have a whole sensor on the front here. So that is detecting the rotation of, of, of the board. 
so that it can actually synchronize to that. Nice. How long is it going to work on the battery? Oh, a very long time. Yeah? Yeah, batteries. the faster you spin it, the longer it lasts. <laughs> There's three batteries because it needs to be uh, 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 balanced. Exactly. So actually, there's so too much power. There's too much power here, so the main reason for having that, first of all, you want to have some, some, some weight to it so that it continues spinning. And the second thing is, of course, you want it to be balanced. So for that reason, you have large batteries in, in, in three it's areas like 12-year battery life or something. <laughs> it is, it, this will last a while. <laughs> But that's not exactly the same chips that we were just talking about? No, this is another one. So this was just a smaller one that we used uh, just for this demo because that was what we had used when we made it a, a couple of months ago. We used a different chip. All right. And, uh, but you know, the big chips are very similar. So the peripherals that you'd see on this one is things that you'd see on the other one. So you're one. talking about the pick here. What is this at Mega? So as, as you may know, um, Atmel was acquired by Microchip two years ago. Yeah. And uh, with that acquisition, all the Atmo products, the AVR products that came in. Okay. So the AVRs um, are 8 bit microcontrollers as well. So uh, Atmega is the AVR? Yes, that's an AVR. So here we have the new device that came in the Mega AVR series. This is the Mega 4809, and it actually comes with more flavors to it. You have if we just switch this one. Yeah. Okay. So we have a number of different variants of this one. We have the 4809, the 4808. So these are <laughs> respectively 14 pin and 32 pin. And you also have the same in 32K uh, versions. So 48 pin and a 32 pin version of that. So these new cool devices, they have uh, a new improved ADC. So the demo we have here, now just turned off. Let's just get this oven running. I don't know why it's turning off now. Give me a moment. Something happens here. So uh, some applications are better to use the pick. Some are better with the AVR. Some are better with the arm. How do people choose? That's a good question. So what I want to show you here is one of the reasons why we uh, recommend 8-bit for some solutions and 32-bit for other solutions. Let me just get this up and running again. There we are. Now we're running. So. As you know, if you go to, for instance, ARM devices, you yeah. typically have a, a high operating frequency. So that is something which is really useful if you want to do massive processing. On the other hand, an 8-bit is typically with lower power consumption. And what we are doing here with the 8-bit is we're focusing on real-time performance. So while 32 machines, they often use the CPU to do a lot of real-time performance, that can be a limitation as well. So what we're instead doing for the PIC and the AVRs is that we put that real-time uh, functionality into the peripherals. But that's so the arm suggests that it's the Cortex R for real-time. Yeah. So, but that? still. Do you have products still, for that? So, so, so we have the arm products next door here. Um, so what we we say that you can do a very good core, but if you do not have excellent peripherals, you can actually not meet your real-time requirements. So the demo here is focusing on the analog performance. So here we have the Mega 4809 on an explained Pro board. This is a standard development board that you can get uh, right now. In addition, we have made a signal generator. And the signal generator is currently generating this signal up here. So this is a raw signal on top. And on the bottom, you have the meshed signal. So that is transmitted from the board up to this tablet uh, PC. So what we can show is that, all right, you have, this is an ideal situation. This is what you would see in the lab. But in reality, you typically have noise. So let's turn on random noise. So what you see here, let's just get this back to where I wanted it to be. Here you see the standard operation of an ADC. The noise that is on the signal is actually measured as well. But the ADC here, it has some fantastic hardware capabilities. You can do hardware averaging, <coughs> meaning that you can actually do filtering in the ADC itself. You don't have to spend CPU cycles to do that. So if we start turning on this, so we're starting to add the oversampling. You can see that the noise, the random noise, is attenuated. And if we go to the maximum oversampling, you can see from that source, we can measure that signal by doing that in, in hardware. So real-time averaging. Real-time averaging. So the CPU is not doing any of this. This is only in the ADC. The other thing we could look at is, all right, here we have some averaging uh, which can remove random noise, but if we have periodic noise, that's a different situation. So we still have the averaging turned on, but here we have a, a higher frequency component uh, overlaying our signal, which is not possible to remove with the averaging. 
what we can do instead is that we can add jitter to the ADC. We can uncorrelate the noise source. And here, we turn it on. We do add the sampling delay. And you can see we actually are able to uncorrelate the noise. So just to make it worse, we're adding the random noise again. You can see the, this is representing a sine wave and a lot of noise. And this is what we can actually measure with the ADC without spending a single CPU cycle. And the ADC is, uh, I mean, what are the use cases for this? Where, where does it go? So again, what, what we're focusing on is sensoring applications. And typically what we see here is that uh, we need it for industrial applications and where you have harsh environments, a lot of noise. There, these fantastic features would be fitting well in because you can you can say you can have noise from a 50 hertz, you can have noise from a lot of different things, so but like we are able to radios. remove that. It, it could be, well, we wouldn't use this specifically for a radio, but it would be for industrial applications where you want to have good analog measurements, even though that you're in a in an electrical noise environment. So this processing that you would normally have to do in software, this would require a, a quite powerful CPU to do the same processing. This is something we can do without spending a CPU cycle. So that is coming back to your question about, well, when do we recommend ARM? When do we recommend 8-bit uh, products? So if you have uh, an application where you need to do good noise suppression and still want to have low power consumption, this is typically an 8-bit application where you want to use these kind of features. So uh, these two new chips that you just uh, presented, they're, they're going to enable new uh, new products in the uh, in society, right? They are. They uh, are. For, like this, this is going to mean what? New machines, new. So what IoT, we see, new, new many of the things that we see today is that a lot of <coughs> of, of uh, systems are being connected. We're talking IoT connected devices, and in all of these situations, typically what you do is that you're measuring. Uh, environmentally, uh, environmental uh, parameters. It can be temperature, air pollution, a lot of things. And you're collecting data about that and transferring that to a centralized system. So this is part of a larger connectivity story where you actually need good analog performance to do connectivity and share that information in IoT applications.